Welcome on the show. It's a Tuesday morning. It's Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa. My name is Wally Scott. Now, we've got things to discuss. Of course, there are Champions League matches, semi-final matches tonight. And of course, um, my Chelsea fans are all over the place. And of course, the Real Madrid fans too are saying their thing too. We'll try and dissect and see what might happen and might not happen tonight. Before that, former Wimbledon star John Fashenu has frowned on the idea of bringing back former Super Eagles striker Odion Higalo to the national team. Now, 31-year-old forward announced his international retirement immediately after the 2019 African Cup of Nations in Egypt, where he finished top scorer as the Eagles placed third at the continent's top football showpiece. Now, head coach Gennot Raw, in a recent interview, hinted that Higalo might return to the Eagles when the 2022 World Cup qualifiers begin next month. Bofashano kicked against the ex-Manchester United strikers' return, saying younger strikers should be given the chance to lead the Eagles' attack. I've got a guest on the show later today. Of course, um, his name is Wale Adekoya. We call him Prof. We'll try and dissect the fact that this is not the first time Gennot Roy is looking for an, a retired footballer to come and join the team. Is it that the man cannot groom new footballers? Can you not think of new ideas? Okay, I've got Wale Adekoya on the line right now. Wale, good morning. Good morning, one is called. Prof, How good morning. Doing? Good morning, I'm good. And you? Okay, well, it's oh. good to be back. Yes, good. Now, Gennot Raw says he wants to call back Odion Higalo for the qualifiers um, for the Super Eagles. Now, um, John Fashanu says, why call back retired footballers? Can't you look for new ones? Can't you discover talents? Last time you said you wanted Vincent Enyama back as goalkeeper. What you had? Every time you have a problem, you go for retired players. What is wrong with this man? <laughs> um, it's so easy. Um, it is so unfortunate that we didn't get it right in the choice of Gennard Rowe. Indeed, he is not the man for the job. So his um, strategy is um, anywhere the left face, ABF. As it is, Gennot Raw has given interviews in the past. When it was Enyama Stone, he said, well, I have goalkeeping problems and I might call back Enyama. Now, he had an interview last week where he said that he might just bring back Odion Higalo. Now, one of the reporters there asked him a question. He said, we have no problems in our attacking options. In fact, we have extra players in attack for us. We've got Victor Osime, Kelechi Inacho, Paul Onuachu, and many more. We don't have a problem in that part of the Super Eagles. Why think of bringing back Odion Igalo? Well, I can tell you for free that in the world today, FIFA has about 209 uh, affiliate um, countries. Nigeria today is one of the most blessed countries in the world when you're talking about the attack. We have super five. They are young, they are creative, they are dashing, and they are so, so dangerous. You cannot... See, Ian Nacho and the likes of Nacho and the other guys, they are from the same country, the same nation. And we have a major tournament coming. And the coach is talking about somebody who voluntarily retired. The, we, we, the media, we know why the young man, the, the man said he's had enough. So have you considered the same spirit? Have you considered the implication? That plot you're going to give to Ian Acho will have gone to one of their super fights, the world-class strikers that are teaching the entire world how football should be played. You saw what happened with Barcelona uh, the other day. You saw what the Nigerian did. He scored the opening goal, a super wonder goal. I and think... the things we are talking about. See, don't forget the last match. The coach said Ahmed Musa will come. He will be invited, but he won't play. That means he has also locked down. He has tied down one spot. 
These things, they don't mean, they don't matter to General Trump. And you can see the manifestation in his desire to invite a player who has forgotten Nigeria. It is sad, another reality, that um, we have gotten it wrong. That idea, I'm sure, common sense will prevail that sleeping dogs should be allowed to sleep. Then let us invite our super player who are painting the world dress with gold. I can understand that Gedoro is convenient with him playing his tested and trusted players. That's all right. And that's why when he had problems in goalkeeping section, he ran back to, let's call back Vincent in Yama. I understand yeah. that um, um, Hamed Musa <clears throat> is not doing very well. No club right now, but he's repatching, remolding, repackaging, remolding the man to ensure the guy is in, in with the Super Eagles the next time we have a major match. The man wants to stick to what he has used before. I can understand that. But that is not the kind of coach, coaches that we have in the world today. Coaches we have now are improvising, are looking for new talent every day. Our coach runs back to retired players every time there's a problem. Is, it's it, as as that. Is as that. Is General Ross saying that he cannot Im get an improved a fantastic player who can play with Ahmed Musa plays and do much better. That is a younger player. Instead of rebolding, remolding, repackaging, reputing re the guy's career in the, in, in the media to try and get a club for him. Instead of spending all that time looking for a club for Ahmed, look for a player who can play in that position that is younger and faster. That, that's the way it should be, but unfortunately we have to reverse. And if you think that this man is earning more than the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. You need to know the how much can I draw earns per day in one day. I'm telling you what it's called, if our people should know the, the breakdown, it can cause a riot. More so, I don't know why this man cannot get a team, a local team, a complete team at home. Eh? We cannot get players. You mean we cannot get five goalkeepers from the 20 teams in the NPSL? Or even from the, the NNL? We cannot get eight solid defenders. We cannot get six midfielders. We cannot get five attackers. At any point in time, he can say, okay, I will use only one defender, one striker, one goalkeeper, one, you know, and stuff. But unfortunately, prevent is the case. He doesn't, he hasn't lived here. He doesn't live here. But we have a match, he comes in like, like, like the opponent. The way our opponents are traveling down to the country, our coach is also traveling down. He has not acclimatized, he's not filling up the culture, the mentality, the philosophy, the ideology. He's not filling the Nigerian. So when he comes, he assembles strangers from around the world. And we also play like the away team. So there's no culture. This this man is hurting the soul of Nigeria's football, and um, you 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 easily relate to the fact that inviting somebody who has said bye bye for years as an attacker, for that matter, when we've never had it so good in terms of attack. Before so many years before because we move on, another sad reality. Before we move on, Prof, um, I know that Clemens Vesterhoff for a long time said um, he was work in progress when he came to Nigeria. Same yeah. words that Genot Raw used, work in progress. But Genot Raw, or what Vesterhoff, gradually from the Nigerian League, took these players one by one, worked them abroad, and he got a world-class team in USA 94. I know for one that Olise was in Nigeria, um, Okocha was in Nigeria, a large amount of them, USA 94, were in Nigeria, and gradually they went abroad, and they built a Galacticos. And um, um, Gennot Ross' work in progress, is he working in progress with bringing in foreign-based play, foreign players? I thought work in progress would be build, building foreign-based players, and then working on Nigerian League too, bringing out talent, raw talent from our league. He's left them alone and faced his players. Gennot Ross will bring in players from Afghanistan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan. Living our players here who are rot and are very good players. <laughs> really? Uh, it, 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 it. See, somebody has joked once that anytime Genatro is in Europe, all Nigerian play, uh, parents, mothers, fathers, they will just be taking their children off the street because Genatro is just, is just to look. Yo, you have a Nigerian origin. Come follow me. <laughs> that is how they are demarketed, the super goods of Nigeria. 
That is why a, 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 a non-professional, a non-footballer, is the number one goalkeeper of Nigeria. I don't have anything against the goalkeeper, the so-called number one goalkeeper, but my issue is he should have started from under 17 or under 20 or the Olympic team. Definitely never the super egos of Nigeria. But that's how bad things have become. And then you talked about Clemens Westhouse. Clemens Westhouse was not even a coach when he came to Nigeria. He was more of a scout. But you know what? He had a job to do. He assembled a team. He invited all the guys. You know, he was the technical advisor, fine, but he also hired a coach. So somehow, he had the, he, he had the, the uh, what do you call the charisma, the charm to talk to the government. You know, uh, the military government then practically assigned the vice president, the military vice president then, to take care of the super eagles. So he walked to the villa while the other guy is doing the job on the field. Look at what we did. There is a direction. There is a purpose. You know how we play. You can say the super eagles, we, we use the wings maximally. If Amunike is torturing you on the left, you know what that the bull can do on the right. You know Yekini will be somewhere. You know the Siasa and Koda can support. You know everybody. See, uh, what is God? Let me quickly tell you this before we leave this matter. There was a time we, uh, Stephen Keshi was interviewed. Um, Keshi said, in training, Yekini would tell him, look at me when you hold the ball, Keshi. Just count your steps, one, two, three. I knew when the ball would come. They have that kind of synergy. It's full, it's, it's native intelligence. It's gels. No, you, you can't buy it. We don't have it. True. That's why I'm saying that we do not have a soul. If you continue with this, it's tournament is coming, you go and wake somebody from the dead, you go to the, you know, we will never get it right. We will win some matches. You say we qualify with matches to stay. But that's not the issue. In a competition, there are most win matches that will separate the boys from the man, from, from the, the, the boys from the men. There are some matches that will definitely separate the child from the comp. If you cannot beat certain opponent at critical moments, you will move to the next round. Where is Keshi today? Where is Amodi Shuaibu? They are dead. We owe them till death. The Nigerian Football Authority owe them. Look at what they still did. Come on. There is fire on the mountain. No doubt about it. I think it's fine mountain everywhere in Nigeria. Right? Okay. Now, um, let's go to our next um, discussion. I think after the Champions League, which happens tonight, we'll talk about that later today, um, the biggest thing is who gets the spot for the Champions League. There are only two spots left for the Champions League in the English Premier League right now. First spot is taken by Man City. Second spot by Man United already. So there are two more spots left. Now, Brendan Rodgers described Leicester centre-back. Johnny Evans is one of the best centre-halves in Europe after his involvement in the key moments in their 2-1 win over Crystal Palace. The former Northern Ireland international made a vital um, saving tackle to deny Christian Benteke a tap-in with the scores level before playing his part in the build-up to Kelechi Hinacho's winner. Now, Rogers was also delighted with the quality of the Nigerian forward's goal. He's now scored 14 goals in his last 14 appearances for the Foxes in all competition. The list of boss offered little on rumours linking him with the managerial vacancy at Tottenham, saying the relative standing of the two clubs is not something that he's thought about. Victory gives Lister a seven-point gap over fifth-place West Ham in the Premier League as they look to return to the Champions League for the first time since 2016. We obviously went behind in the game and playing against one of Roy's teams that are super organised, very compact, very tight, sit deep. Then there was going to be a real test for us to, to break through that block. Um, we just said at half time about um, keeping our calmness, just circulating the ball that fraction faster. We knew the space was on the sides. Could we then work it to there and then combine centrally? and. Uh, yeah, I thought, obviously, the, the goal early in the half, it was a wonderful goal. Um, so that then sets the tone for us. And, um, yeah, throughout the end of the half, I thought we... What was really pleasing was that the patience that we kept in the game, uh, trying to just trying to keep probing and passing. And, and we ended up, we scored two goals. And with a bit more finesse, we might have had uh, 
uh, another couple of goals. Johnny makes a really important challenge for us, which is as good as a goal. But overall, to come back, two goals of real high quality. And um, yeah, we, we had that hunger and desire to, to get the three points. I just think it's, it's belief in, in the talent. He's clearly a talent. I think it's a great, um, great comparison. If you look at that game at Crystal Palace up there around Christmas time, he, he missed a penalty. His confidence, it, it, it wasn't at the highest level. And uh, but you look a few months on now into April, and he's a different player. You know, with the form that he's in, the quality that he has. I just think it's he has the talent, and he's having the opportunity now. In fairness to, to him, I've said it before, we've played a different system, um, which has meant that he's come into the games more uh, and he was still effective, uh, but never quite got the run. We've obviously had to design the team around the injuries we had. So while it's hot up now in the English Premier League, um, Leicester might be going to the Champions League for the first time since 2016. It's a mass watering, um, although the, the last time they had that opportunity, it wasn't well utilized. But I want to believe that this time around, things have changed. The boys are gelling, their talisman is back, and um, they have a coach who has this kind of um, we can do it um, mentality. But uh, it, it, look at what happened last time. We were just talking about Nigeria, and you saw what uh, the senior man, uh, as it's popularly called, you know, anytime you talk to him, actually, the senior man, the yeah. senior man, <laughs> how is being called, the senior man. Um, it, it, it's heartwarming, and um, it's going to be a big deal if it seems like Leicester will come number four in the Premier League. That's it nice. It's going to be as amazing as winning the league itself. At least we have Indian um, Yenacho there, yeah. Let's look at tonight's matches. The UEFA Champions League. Now, Thomas Tuchel has laughed off suggestions that neutral fans might want Chelsea to lose their UEFA Champions League semi-final against Real Madrid in the wake of the European Super League debacle of which Chelsea and Real were involved. Now, Tuchel was asked if he had a message for football fans who will be watching. Now, um, and the Chelsea boss promised that his side will show their passion for football and the Champions League when they take to the pitch for the first leg on Tuesday. That's today against Real Madrid. Really? Do you think that? And, and they want to see us fail against Real Madrid because they were not part of this? Or? <laughs> so, yeah. Yes, yeah, so. sir. Come on, eh? we all did mistakes and uh, if, you, if you lead a club and if you own a club, uh, you can make uh, decisions that not everybody understands and not everybody likes. This is, this is part of life, but it does not change the, the love for the game. I can just tell everybody that I love this game uh, so, so much and like everybody in the dressing room, uh, the boys are so, so, so happy out there on the pitch with a smile, so, so excited about uh, tomorrow's game semi-final. We need all support to make, uh, to, 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 to be able to, to overcome this huge step and, um, and in these two games. So. Uh, put your anger to the decision, put your anger to, to the way the decision was presented. Well, well understood and um, absolutely fine for me. But don't put it on the team and don't put it on the, on the, and, and never doubt the love uh, that, that all of, all, all people here at Cobham and, and I'm sure in all other clubs, uh, don't doubt the love that, that everybody has for, for this game. And you will see all the passion and, and tomorrow on the pitch again. Okay. Real Madrid coach Zinedine Zidane said on Monday he was not thinking about any sanctions against the club from UEFA in the wake of the European Super League announcement last week. The breakaway league involving 12 of Europe's major clubs collapsed within three days of its announcement amid a fierce backlash from fans, governing bodies and politicians. Real President Florentino Perez was named as chairman of the project and appears to have been the driving force behind the league, which ended in embarrassment as most clubs withdrew. Local media have suggested referees might now treat Real Madrid differently, but the Frenchman brushed aside those suggestions as well. Zidane will be without injured defenders Sergio Ramos, Lucas Vasquez and Ferland Mendy, as well as midfielder Federico Valverde, who is self-isolating following a positive COVID-19 test for the visit of the Premier League side. There was a better news, however, with midfielder Tony Cruz and Real's former Chelsea forward Edin Hazard 
who are fit for the game. Now, Wally, this is what we're talking about. Real Madrid against Chelsea. And I've always said, somewhere along the line, Lampard got to the, went to the market and got himself some standard Champions League players. He didn't get himself EPL players. He got himself Champions League players. And they've gotten him, they've gotten, well, the club, to the semi-finals. Uh, um, let, let me start with Madrid. Madrid is a difficult thing to even analyze as a matter of fact. You know, you're talking about a big team, probably the wealthiest in the world. Um, <laughs> in the defense is the personality is amazing. The experience, dotted, the Senate all. Look at the midfield. They have the veterans there. You know, anyone who, 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 who has um, the German, you, you know. So, above all, it's, it, it, it's a tight thing. You can never tell what aspect of their, um, of what side they will be bringing in the match. They must fight going the other way, fine. But um, if you ask me, I'm free on the of you. I'll take my next time tonight. I will just tell you that the watch you see means they can go any way, either way. If Madrid comes out as Madrid, uh, they're going to deal with Chelsea mercilessly. But then Chelsea is not, it seems to be pushed away. Maybe sentimentally, because of the uh, African connection, I want to say Chelsea. But um, see, we have an amazing 90 minutes tonight. Well, I'll ask, ask this question. Um, everybody is saying that um, the attack, Chelsea's attack is fantastic. They have I a fantastic attack. You. Chelsea's attack is very fantastic. They have a very good okay. attack. However, they are saying that their defense might not be able to hold on to Edin Hazard and Vinicius Jr. They are too fast and too skillful. Who will, that defense can hold any of them down? Mm. Well, it, 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 even though we see, Madrid itself, they are, they, they, are, they are wasteful. Benzema has been given his best, but in the Champions League, you need the guy who can hop. Um, the Madrid attack, for me, is not even the strength. I'm more scared of the back line and the, the geniuses in the midfield. But being that as it may, um, Chelsea should fancy their chances. This game will be determined by the team that can score these goals. Wale. Um, yes, it might be easier to score Chelsea than scoring Madrid as far as so the two teams are concerned. But I tell you, this is not a night to waste chances. Is that thing? Look, we are seeing all of this. You can just get a free kick, somebody will just convert it, like we saw the German did the last time. So it will be determined by the goal, not even the coaches. It will be about the goal. That but, team that can score those goals when they matter most will take the, the day. The Real Madrid have score. the strikers who can score the goals. Vinicius Jr., Edin can come to the party today, Karim Benzema. But of course, in Chelsea, anyone can score the goal. Timo Werner, Akim Ziyech, Pulisic, Olivier Giroud, if they have a good day, any of them. Yeah, that, that, that's what I'm saying. And that's why Chelsea has gone thus far. You cannot hold anybody. They have this, this aura of invisibility. You know, nobody understands them. You cannot say he's the man to mark. They are doing their thing. The defenders can come. And the fluidity in that sense is simply out of this world. And the fact that the guy is there, you cannot hold anybody, makes it more difficult. The Venetian Junior, I'm still not impressed. He's not the guy you rely on when you need to win. And Benzema himself has not come to impose himself as he wants to when it matters. But all of them, all the 22 men tonight, they will have history to make. Uh, if they can, if the semi final, the almighty, the all powerful, the all encompassing Champions League, and uh, the stake is just too high. I, I cannot wait uh, for that time to come. I'm going to watch and enjoy a good match. It's going to be rough, it's going to be dogged. You'll see some injuries, cards, calls will come. And by the end of it all, 
that team that can hit the ball will definitely take the day. Thank you very much. Wale Likoya for joining us on the show today. Thank you very much. Wale says it's going to be a great match tonight. Just sit back and relax and enjoy good football. Chelsea against Real Madrid. However, he said there will be cat calls. Cat calls because let's see how the fans behave themselves tonight. Because both teams were involved in forming a Super League. We don't know how the fans will treat both of them tonight when they play. Will they be cat calls? Will they insult them for actually planning to form a league? Tonight, tomorrow morning, we'll talk about it on the show. And of course, join us. On Plus Sports and Plus TV Africa, we'll talk about that. And of course, tomorrow's match, Man City against Paris Saint-Germain. My name is Wally Scott. Like I always advise you, at the end of every show, if not for anything, at least for your heart, do some sports. <laughs>